I really am excited what we're beginning today in, in this month, and it is a Building Hope series, which we're going to do for the next four weeks, Building Hope. And last year, we had built together, and we, the whole theme of that is what lies ahead. And we didn't really realize when we thought what lies ahead, we were thinking of our future. We didn't think of a global pandemic unrest in our city. But this year, we are simply, when we have on November 22nd, the Building Hope offering or the Build Together offering, we want to simply build hope. That's what we want to do. And, and Becky and I are already praying about what we want to sow as a community of faith into the Building Hope offering because I believe now our world needs hope more than ever. Presently, our world feels grim. However, I want to say something. We believe that better days are ahead. We believe that. And I want to say another thing. You know, some people say you could only live without food 40 days, that you could live without water three days, that you can live literally without, uh, without oxygen about eight minutes, but only one second can we live without hope. And if there was ever a time in our nation, in our world, in our generation, and I feel this strongly, we need hope in our times. And that's why we're going to be ministering, building hope. Are you with me? And I just want you to know right now, what are you expecting in 2020, in 2021? And I want you to begin to think about what are you pregnant with? Because when you're pregnant with something, it's going to bring a fruition. And can I say we are pregnant with an eternal hope that our tomorrow is going to be better than right now. And I don't know if you've ever experienced hopelessness. And one of the reasons we're uh, it's literally ministering and communicating on building hope because when we become hopeless, I want you to know this, when we become hopeless, we stop fighting, we stop believing, and we stop praying. And I want to say, City Church, California, we are not going to stop fighting. We're not going to stop believing. And we're not going to stop praying. And our fight is not against people. There is a darkness that tries to destroy. It is the kingdom of Satan. And the weapons we fight with, that's not just with the mind, but it's through Jesus Christ. And we have complete victory in Jesus. And you know what, let me just say this. I know many people or some people, they really, they do not want, they're afraid or they're disappointed to begin to hope. Why? Because they've been disappointed. They put their hope in something and it did not work out uh, the way they want it. Now, I want you to begin to believe this. Some of us are afraid to hope, again, because we've been disappointed. If our hope has been misplaced, we can begin to make God the object of our hope. Do you get that? And when we make God the object of our hope, we can have a confidence confident expectation that tomorrow, say that with me, that tomorrow, come on, chat that with me, that will be better than the day. When we begin to put, our, make God the object of our hope, we will have a confident expectation that the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow, I know you like this song, there'll be sun when you're stuck with a day that's gray and lonely. You have on a mask and you say, Today, I just made that part up. Tomorrow, tomorrow, there's going to be sun tomorrow. And when you lived in Seattle so long, that was a miracle song. Now, let me just tell you this. Building hope means this, that we will meet the needs of our church family first and people who we know in our city and in California. And we want to begin to partner with other churches, other organizations to strengthen our connection and double the influence of our church. And we want to bring hope to the hopeless. Our vision, please get this, our vision is very, very clear. I want you to know that. Our vision, number one, is that anyone can believe. Number two, that we could become like Jesus. And number three, that we build together. And that's what we want to do. I want to begin to talk to you about hope. Everyone say this, faith, faith. believes God can. Believe God. Say hope, hope. believes God will. 
But I want to add something. God put this on my heart yesterday. I was meditating on that. Faith always believes God can. Hope always believes God will. And as I was thinking on that, the Spirit of God impressed on my mind, and he said, yes, and miracles always believe that God has already done it, that he's not going to do it. He's already done it. Jesus Christ already died. He already rose. There is a better hope and future for the United States of America. Now, I want you to begin to think about this. Hope always has an object, a language, and an action. And you may want to write that down. You could chat that. Hope always has an object, it has a language, and it has an action. And we will build hope. And I want you to really get this through loving, praying, serving, giving, and believing. And as a result, I believe our lives will be transformed and California will be transformed. I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians. This is our theme verse. It's an amazing verse, chapter 5, verse 11, and I'm going to read out of the message. It says, build up hope so you'll all be together in this. No one left out, no one left behind. I know you're already doing this, but just keep on doing it. I want to say that again. It says, build up hope. Say that with me. Say it a little bit louder. Chat it in all caps. Okay, thank you, sweetheart. Build up hope uh, so you'll all be together in this. No one left out, no one left behind. I know you're already doing this. Just keep on doing it. Now, I want you to begin to think about this. Hope is a combination of desiring something and the expectation of receiving it. I just want you to begin to think about that. Hope is a combination. You desire something, then it's the expectation of receiving that. Did you get it? Hope is a combination. First, you desire something, then it's the expectation of receiving it. One of my favorite things I used to do with the boys, too, John and Jake, when they're in, um, you know, probably preschool, early elementary, uh, and I was teaching them how to field the ball, baseball. So we'd go to the park, and they'd have their baseball gloves on, and I'd say, if you could catch two grounders in a row when we go to the ice cream shop, you get two scoops. If you do three in a row, you get three scoops. So Jake was always, Dad, hit me one, hit me, hit me. And I hit, and he was always expecting. He had full attention. Jude sometimes would get distracted. I'd say, Jude, you ready? You ready? And he'd go, Dad, look at that skateboarder. You know, I should have just let him skateboard. Now, John... That day, in, 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 I said, John, are you ready? He goes, yeah. I said, John, are you ready? He goes, Jack, now remember that hope is a combination of desiring something, but the expectation of receiving it. I don't know if John fully desired to catch the ball, but John did desire to get some ice cream. So I said, John, are you ready? He goes, yeah. I said, John, are you ready? You sure? No, look at me. Come on. Dad is going to hit the ball. So I threw up the ball. And I hit it, In that time, it wasn't soft. It was like a rocket going out uh, of a, a cannon. And right when I hit the ball, what does John do? He looks up in the trees, and, and so he desired to catch it, but he wasn't expecting it to come his way. And the ball hit him right in the arm. You would have thought he got set on fire. He starts running in a circle, screaming. He didn't know what hit him. Can I tell you right now, I am not ending 2020 going into 2021. Is there going to be a vaccine? Is there not? Yes, there's therapeutics. I'm putting my hope in a God of hope. And can I say, not only am I desiring that God is going to give me better days, I'm expecting 2021 to be better than 2020. Come on. Are you with me? And so hope's origin is in God. I want you to say that with me. Hope's origin is in God. Tweet that. Hope's origin is in God. You go, how can I tweet that? Hope isn't based on us. It's based on God. Please get that. Hope is not based. And I really want you to know this. That's why when the election comes and it's over and it will be, our hope is not going to uh, evaporate because it's not based on us. It is based on God. Now, get this. You really need to write this down. Hope is a favorable and confident expectation of the future. Hope is a favorable and confident expectation of the future. Faith, and I want to say this again, and maybe you could say it with me. Say, faith is believing God can. I love the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. Jesus came down the mountain of transfiguration with three of his uh, disciples that he was mentoring. 
Peter, James, and John. And a group of people were at the base of the mountain, and they had a man whose son was afflicted for years. And the man said this, Lord, can you do anything? That's where faith begins, can. Lord, can you do anything? And Jesus said, can you believe? You see, faith is God can. Hope is God will. And so you know what Jesus said? Can you believe? All things are possible for those who believe. But I go a step further today. Not only does faith say God can, hope says God's will. But let me tell you, expectation says God has already done it. Or the miraculous or the supernatural says God has already done it. And you know what it says? Remember the leper said, God, are you willing? willing. If you're willing, you can make me whole. That's hope. That leper had hope. The man was trying to get faith. But in Mark 11, 22, it says, whatever things you believe that you have received them, that it's already done, there will be a miracle in your midst. I don't want to end this year just trying to believe or trying to hang on. I want to believe that God has already done it. That's where supernatural breakthroughs come for our nation, for our lives, for our church. Can you say amen. Now go with me. You, this is a very famous verse. Go to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And again, hope is a combination of desiring and expectation to receive it. Now, begin to write, uh, write this down. It says, and now abide faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I want to say that again. Now abides faith, hope, and love. Say that with me. Now, I want you to know, faith is always in the now. Hebrews 11 says, now faith is. You put faith one minute or second in the past, it's no longer faith. If you put faith one second in the future, it becomes hope. Now, love, the Bible says love covers a multitude of wrongdoing. Love is for my past. Faith is for the now, but hope is always for the future. Hope is for my future and your future. And we have an expectation that tomorrow is going to be better than today. Go with me to this scripture, uh, Romans chapter 5. I want to begin to talk about hope's object. You see, hope desires, listen to this, hope's desire has the potential to create a better world. Hope always has an object, such as a career a goal, a relationship, a desired outcome. But our hope is in God. When God, please get this, when God is the object of our hope, we will have an endurance for living, meaning we will never give up. I have hope for things that did not come about, and I would end up giving up. But when I make God the object of my hope, it gives me an endurance not to give up. During this pandemic, church, hear me. Many of us have wanted to give up, but there is something in eternal within us. It is the hope of Jesus Christ that we will endure. Can you say amen? Now let's read Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 5. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Everyone say, I have peace. Say it again. I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope. We rejoice. That means we, we have a joy on the inside of us that somehow tomorrow is going to be brighter than right now. And it goes on and it says this of the glory of God, verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Now, why would anyone glory during a rough time like we've been going through as a nation and world for seven months? Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint. Everyone say that with me. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, let me just say this. If I may... My career, a relationship, a goal, or a desire, that becomes the focus or the object of my hope. I can be disappointed. But what Paul is writing in Romans chapter 5, when we begin to make God the focus of our hope, that literally we will have an endurance. Now, I want to go through this, and I, I want to go through the progression. It says here, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. 
Now, I used to think that when I would go through a hard time, a trial or a tribulation, that it was working hope within me. But years ago, we were going through a dark time. Our pastor in Seattle literally was given months to live. Uh, he had a diabolical diagnosis, and, and I was beginning to lose my hope. And I want you to begin to think about this. I was meditating on these words, and the Spirit of God impressed on my mind. He said, Jude, he said, hope is eternal. He said, you don't discover hope in a hard time. You discover hope when you discover me. He said, hope, get me, get me, watch me, watch me. He said, hope was with you before the tribulation. It's walking with you in the tribulation. And it's going to be waiting right there with you and for you after the tribulation. He said, I am hope. Love, faith, and hope remain. Why? Because God is hope. God is love. God is faith. Come on. <clears throat> and I used to think this, that when, like the pandemic, come on, people. If going through a tribulation and we hold on like the cat in the picture, oh, I'm holding on to Jesus come. No, I'm not holding on like that because hope is a rope that holds on to me when I can't hold on to God or myself. Come on. And I actually used to think, come on, if tribulation or this pandemic or this shutdown going through a rough time would produce character then everybody in America should have a lot of character but as you can tell a lot of us are losing our character oh no you did and don't act that like you're all that then some in a can of Pringles you know I ain't wearing a mask I am wearing the mask can I tell you what I got impressed with, God said, Jude, when you go through what you're going through as a nation and as a people, he said, hope is before the pandemic. Hope is going to walk with you through the pandemic. Hope is going to be waiting for you after the pandemic. And he said, it's not going to be your character that is going to begin to blossom. I have no character. It is Jesus Christ, the hope of glory that can begin to shine in our lives. Come on. Our vision is that we would become more like Jesus. Now, God doesn't need a tribulation to make us have righteousness, but in a tribulation, he shines bright. Can you say amen? And so I want you to really know this. Say, hope is my expectation for a better day. And you know why I believe that? Because I believe in God. I believe in the hope of the resurrection. I believe in the hope of my calling. I believe God who started a good work in me will complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. Next one, everyone say hope's language. Say it again. Now, I want you to just know this. We will build on hope or we will destroy with the lack of hope. Really, again, you could go 40 days without food. Probably need to do that. A few days without water, a few minutes without oxygen or air, but we can't even really live one second without hope. Please hear me when I tell us this. We are not putting our whole hopes in any government. Now, I believe in my government. I'm praying for them. I don't believe in everyone, but I'm believing God is controlling this. But can I say, when I make God the object of my hope, then I will not be disappointed. Everyone say hope's language. I want you to go with me to one of my very favorite scriptures. It's Romans chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Romans chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. And I really do believe this. Hope is the interior of our faith when our belief system had been shattered. Have you ever had something you're believing for that's been shattered? Hope becomes that interior part Hope becomes an anchor of our soul when we're going through a storm. It's not just the United States. All of Europe, Africa, Brazil are facing the very same thing we're facing, this contagion. But can I say it right now, in a storm, your soul can have an anchor, and that's called hope. And hope is a life-giving energy that when your dreams are crushed and smashed, that there can be a better day. And you can hope against hope. 
And you see, hope has a language, and it's not based on culture. It's not based on the current events. It is based on the God that lives within us. And listen to this. I love this. This is Romans 4, 17 and 18. He said, God is speaking. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead. Now get this, this is the language of hope, if you could get this. Faith is always saying God can. Hope says God will. But if you get this next phrase that Paul writes, you can move into the miraculous because it goes beyond will and can that God has already done it. And now if you want to know how God talks, God doesn't talk like, oh, I hope so. Oh, I'm wishing. Oh, I, I, I think maybe. No, no, no. We're not just kind of hoping. We are declaring it's already done, not because of us, but because of who Jesus Christ is. I think I'm going to shout. Amen. Come on. Now listen to this. This is how God speaks the language of hope. He said he gives light to the dead. This is the part I want you to get. And calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Did you get that? That he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Say that with me. Calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And I love this. This is with Abraham. Because of that, God said, you're going to be a father. He couldn't even have children. His wife was past the years of bearing a child. And God said, no, you're going to be the father of many nations. What did God do? He went all the way to the end and called it into a reality. You see, faith says God can. Hope says God will. But when we get that expectation and we're pregnant, not what's what's going on, what are you full of? Be filled with the promises of Jesus Christ and you will see your hope will explode within you. Can you say amen? Now get this, it says, who, was con who contrary to hope, in hope believed. Did you get that? Literally, hope is like a womb, literally pressing out the promise of God into a reality in our life. I love that. I'm going to say it slower. I'm going to breathe. It says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. Say that. Just let's read that again. I'm going to slow down. I want you to get this. It says, who contrary to hope right now? We have a lot of contrary forces coming against our faith. In hope, he believed. Why? That he became the father of many nations. How did he become the father of many nations? Get this last name. I mean, last phrase. According to what was spoken. I want to say that again. According to what was spoken. Chat that. Tweet that. Say that. According to what was spoken. Let's say it again. What are you saying? What are you saying? I just was on the phone with someone who's a pastor in, in California, and he has to go. They found malignancy on the pancreas, and they will have to remove his pancreas and spleen. And he said, Pastor Jude, I need you to pray for me. And I began to pray, and not only did I pray in faith, I prayed in hope. And I gave him a verse of the woman who went to the prophet whose son had passed away. She lied to him on the prophet's bed. You could read it in Kings. And she said to the prophet, he said, how are things with you? She didn't speak the current event. She said these words, all is well. Why? Because she was pregnant with the promises of God. I will not be filled with current events. I will not be filled with comes in and on and out of Twitter. We will be filled according to not what will be spoken, but what was spoken. Come on. I'm not basing my hope on what will be spoken, what political promise is going to come about. I am building, we are building our hope on what was spoken. Man, that is so good. Everyone say hope's object. That's God. Say hope's language. And really hope's language. Again, faith believes God can. Hope believes he will. But please, will you change? All I know is this. If you change and get this next step, 2021 will be the most miraculous year of your life. Many of us, we have faith and say, oh, God can do anything. God can do anything, almost flippantly. 
Then we move into home and say, God will do it. But if you can get what I'm saying, if I get it, I believe 2021 will be our greatest year. And get this, it's not, it, he calls those things as though they were not, as though they were. It's being it's so expectant that on the inside of us, it's already happened. This is the way I'll describe it. And this is why I want to say, ask this question. Are you expectant? I'll never forget the first time my wife, she was pregnant with our son, Jude. And uh, moments, you know, we took that test and we didn't even have money to buy the test. And it turned pink and it turned pink and it turned pink. And, and I remember going, we're pregnant. And she kind of looked at me. She wasn't feeling well. She kind of slapped me. She goes, you're not pregnant. I'm pregnant. <laughs> and it's your fault. And I go, yeah, I, I had a little, little bit to do with that. And, and so, but you know what's, I want you to get this. Becky was just as pregnant that first second she was pregnant, even that last second before she delivered. Many of you right now, if you open up the womb of your mind, your heart, your imagination, I want to say where your faith and hope is, you will become pregnant in one sense. Are we going to become pregnant with fear because of a contagion that is fighting the whole world? Or will we become pregnant? Not what will be spoken. Many of you are saying, God, what are you saying? What are you saying? What has he already said? What has he already said? God has said a lot about our lives, our future, our world. What, not what he's going to say. We don't need to go to another YouTube channel seeing what God will say. God has said. And when we get pregnant with that, I promise you, you're going to walk different. You're going to eat different. You're going to live different. And you will have a miracle. Now, so hope's object is God. Hope's language is literally believing it's done. It's already done. Can I just say, and this is where we're going to end, I'm going to invite uh, the worship team to come up. I'm not believing I will be forgiven. I believe I'm already forgiven. I'm not believing I uh, will be healed. I believe I'm already healed. And one day, this corruption will put off incorruption. This mortality will put off immortality. And the last one is, is hope always has an action. And I want you to know this, and I, I want to read this. Anticipation is acting on what we're expecting. My John wasn't really anticipating the ball was going to come to him. That's why he took his eyes off the prize. But anticipation is acting on what we're expecting. Anticipation, please get this, prepares for the promise before it happens. Did you get that? Tweet that, say that. Anticipation prepares for the promise before it happens. Becky, they call it nesting instinct. Probably about a month before Jude was born, John was born, Jake was born, she cleaned the whole house in about four hours. She not only cleaned the house, she set up the nursery. She got curtains. She began to get things in order. Why? Because anticipation prepares for the promise before the promise. Now, I want, I want to say this as we're ending. Prayer is the greatest action. Prayer is our greatest action. Go with me to Romans 15, 13. It is the prayer of the entire book. Prayer that is infused with anticipation is powerful and effective. This prayerful action allows us to experience the limitless potential of God and live a life with tremendous opportunities. I want to read Romans chapter 15, 13. Now may the God of hope, please get that. You know why I told you hope was before the tribulation? Because God is a God of hope. God existed before I was born, before the pandemic. And he's walking us through this, and he'll be on the other side of it. Now, get this. One of my favorite prayers in the entire New Testament. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. I want to repeat that. Now, and I'm making it a prayer for you and me and for all of us. Now may the God of peace fill me with all joy and peace in believing. Years ago, I was praying this and reciting this. And again, the Spirit of God impressed on my mind. He says, there's doubting and depression in unbelief, but there's peace and joy in believing. Where are you hopeless? Where have you just given up? Where have you gotten depressed? And not only depressed, but you're beginning to doubt and a heaviness is on you. You know what? The biggest danger, and we're building hope together, it's not just about an offering. We will give every penny 
of the Building Hope offering to people in our church, people in our city, to help put food on the table, help pay the rent or the mortgage. We're working with an organization that will help reduce medical bills that they occurred during uh, this pandemic. But please get this. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. Why? Why do we want to do that? Because when we lose hope, or we become hopeless, please get me. We stop believing, we stop giving, and most of all, we stop fighting. And I want you to know, City Church California, we're not gonna stop fighting. We're not gonna stop giving. We're not gonna stop believing because the God of hope has filled us with all joy and peace in believing. Now get this, why? Why has he filled us with joy and peace? That we may abound, chat that word, say that abound let's say it again say it again you know what the opposite of abound is bound bound our whole world our state has restrictions you can go out but you have to have a mask you have to be six feet apart can i say in god there is no restriction it says we will abound me have no limits no one's limiting us. We have a God that died on a cross, was buried, and on the third day rose that we can have an eternal hope in Jesus Christ. Everyone say, all is well. I love this. It says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Why? That you may abound in hope. Everywhere I go, I want hope just to ooze out of me that the sun is going to come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar there will be sun. And when you're stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, just stick out your chin and grin and say, tomorrow is going to be better than this moment. And my focus isn't on me, even my desire. It is on God. And if my desire is on God, I will have a better tomorrow than I have in this moment in Jesus' name. And it will be by the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you stand with me? I want us to pray this. Faith is, I don't know, one of the greatest things I've ever experienced. And faith is beyond saying God can. Hope is saying God will. There is an expectation that comes in. Miracles say it's already happened. And I don't know about you, but I'm already righteous on a good day or a bad day. Because he already died for me. And you see, when I confess my selfishness or sin, I'm not just saying, oh God, I sinned, I sinned, I sinned. I say what he says about my sin. Yes, Lord, I sinned, I did that, but Lord, you died for that and you made me righteous. And Lord, you call me righteous. You became sin that I could become righteous. So Lord, I'm not asking that you will make me righteous or you can make me righteous. God, in Jesus Christ, you have already made me righteous. Come on. Can I say, I'm not saying, God, can you bless me? God, will you bless me? No, God has already blessed me. I'm not saying, oh God, can you free me? God, will you free me? No, God has already freed me. I feel so infused to tell you, God's already done it. He's already healed you. He's already provided for you. He's already blessed you. He's already healed. Come on, freed you. You know, when we, oh, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. They start waiting on God when they're 20, then they're 200 years old and they're still waiting on God. God is waiting on us. Don't get stuck. God can. God will. Move into that arena. God has already done it. Well, 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 my gosh, my gosh. If you've never accepted Christ, he is the hope of your salvation. I want you to say this. You go, well, I'm going through a hard time. I know. But this pandemic is not like being crucified to the cross. How did Jesus make it? On the cross, Hebrews 12 says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame. Why? He had an eternal hope that you and I 
would receive him. Now, if you've never done that, I want us to do that today. Everyone pray this with me. Say, Jesus, you are my hope. You're my focus. You are the healing of my past, the faith of my now. But, oh, God, you're the hope of my future. And my days and my life is going to get brighter and brighter, better and better. I'm receiving hope right now. I am receiving hope right now. And as you are the God of peace, he's going to give you all joy and peace in believing. I don't know who this is for. I'm going to tell you what I told my friend all is well. All is well. That woman said that when her boy was dead, but then all would become well. Will you begin to think those words and you say, what should I do? This week may be put to your mind and memory, Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you memorize that? Pray that. And when you get filled with anxiety, you go, I don't know what's going to happen. Just say those words and let that be the language of hope. Call those things as though they were not, as though they were. We love you so much, City Church, California. You're great, great people, and you be blessed. Spread hope wherever you go.